Hello, hello, my friend. We are live and I hope the technology is working correctly. I hope that my microphone is working and I hope that you can see me. And um, I am super happy to be here today. I am very excited. We are going to talk about a topic that I have it close to my heart, which is uh, yoga philosophy and how to integrate yoga philosophy into your day to day as a yoga teacher, as a wellness practitioner, as a yogapreneur. And um, this is the subject I'm talking about this week. It's the, it's basically the idea, it's from the blog post uh, that I have for this week, that it's about embracing the niyamas in your business. It's a way to practice off the mat, it's a way to practice beyond your yoga mat and to embrace your, uh, the, the yoga philosophy outside your yoga mat. In particular, this blog post for this week, I think could be, can be very helpful for those of you who perhaps feel doubtful at, at times. And um, sometimes uh, you might be wondering about this path into entrepreneurship. Um, the difficulties, how how um, difficult it's to keep consistency and to keep moving forward um, and achieving that goal uh, of becoming a successful business owner for whatever success means for you. If you feel that way, this video today and my blog post is for you. Uh, I'm going to give I'm gonna be giving you some motivation and inspiration, okay? And the reason I'm telling you this is because sometimes you might be um, uh, dreaming to have more freedom in your day-to-day -day life as, a, as an independent um, yoga practitioner, as an independent wellness entrepreneur, but you may get to realize that your day-to-day -day gets completely uncharted, completely all over the place, and sometimes this may feel frustrated. Um, the fact that you want to have more freedom in your life and to do the things that you love, but, um, but also seeing that your day-to-day -day feels like kind of all over the place, that might make you the feeling that you are not there yet, having that freedom that you would like to have to travel around the world, to plan your day, to work from wherever you want. Those are things that sometimes we encounter as obstacles. Um, I know that living, a, in a way, you are living your dharma, which means you are serving people with your skills, with the work that you do. I know that this is something that it really, really, really fills your heart. And this is something that makes you feel very connected to your practice and it makes you feel very connected to something bigger than yourself. But at the same time, at the moment, perhaps you are not seeing the impact or the income that you deserve for your work. Sometimes that happens. If that is the case, you can let me know in the comments if this is how you feel. Um, I know you work uh, from the heart and you pour so much passion and energy into what you do, but sometimes it's difficult to reach those goals that we want to put for ourselves. And of course, everyone, every one of us have different goals and, and you know, everyone has, should have different, <laughs> different goals and, and it, with our different business ideas. And um, well, so if all of these that I share with you just sound like you, stay here, my friend, because I'm going to share today, as I say, how to embrace yoga philosophy, in particular, the niyamas, um, uh, the five niyamas of the yoga pra uh, principle, yoga practice, to integrate, to use them in a very simple way, uh, in a very practical way, to use them as a day-to-day -day, uh, practice, that you can use and integrate. Of course, you do have more information, everything that we're gonna be talking about today, it's gonna, it's written in my blog post and if you want to access that information, you will find the description, um, you will find the links to my blog in the description of this video. 
All right. So let's dive in. And as we dive in, the first, the first thing that comes to my mind, and uh, and I've heard this sometimes before, um, something inside of me is telling me, but Manu, can you really mix both? I mean, yoga philosophy and business? Because yoga philosophy, it's all about spirituality, connection to the spirit, connection to, to something bigger than yourself. And business is about making money, right? How can you integrate those two principles together? I mean, can you mix both? And in a way, is it not disrespectful to yoga? If this is you, if this is your thoughts, I want to also share my thoughts with you and how I view this. And for me, to the question, can you mix both? I would say absolutely yes, you can. And the reason I say yes, you can is because I deeply believe that the yoga practice, and in this case, in this context, we are talking about the more philosophical practices that come with yoga. It's it's more than it's more about taking your yoga practice beyond your yoga mat. If we are talking about using those tools, uh, that wisdom of yoga in our day-to-day -day life, why this shouldn't be a, a tool that could be useful for entrepreneurs, for wellness practitioners, yoga practitioners who are on the on the way to running a business or who are willing to run a business? What a more beautiful way or what a better way to integrate the yoga practice into your day to day than being a business owner. I have written before about that and I really feel very, very inspired. And by the way, I don't think this is disrespectful at all. And I would even go farther and say, I think the yoga philosophy shouldn't be something ungraspable or it shouldn't be something complicated okay instead in my experience it's when i have been learning yoga philosophy i've learned from different sources when i got to learn yoga philosophy and it becomes like something super difficult and super airy fairy and something that i couldn't grasp the only thing it didn't serve me it didn't uh, i didn't think it was helpful in any way but when i've been studying with other teachers that um, have integrated these teachings this wisdom into the examples of the day-to-day -day life i found that this was so helpful and it was so so really good so these are the reasons i i think it's it's um you can mix both i don't think it's disrespectful and honestly I think as yoga experts, as yoga uh, professionals, as wellness professionals, it is time for us to let go and to teach that typical phrase that I've been hearing um, before, that idea that making money is something um, non-spiritual or, uh, or it's something unethical, okay? We need to ditch that mentality because the reality is, is this. Yes, a business is about making money, that's for sure. But business is not only about making money. 50% of this is about, of course, making money because money is the blood of your business. But the other 50% of your business is to help people. Yes, that's the purpose of your business is to help people achieve whatever they want to achieve in their lives and of course each type of business and each different business owner it's helping different group of people with different kinds of problems so having said that what i mean is like not every business will make uh, will find a solution for everyone's problem and we have been talking about this a lot many times i always uh, talk about niching down and finding your niche and stuff so yeah, I mean, what is more spiritual than that? Than helping people achieving the dreams, achieving the desires, or taking them, or taking them out of the 
painful situations in which they are feeling right now. And of course, all of that, all of that will be compensated with money. So for me, when I hear that thing about, you know, it's unethical, it's unspiritual, my first thought about that is bullshit. <laughs> really, just like that. This is how I feel about that. All right. Having said that, how can we, how can you embrace and integrate the niyamas as a yoga or wellness preneur in your day-to-day -day life? And of course, we're going to go one by one. And the first one we have today, it's saucha, which translates as purity and cleanliness. And uh, there are different perspectives from which I can see that you can integrate saucha into your day-to-day -day life as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a wellness entrepreneur. And the first one, I like to think about clarity and the clarity of the mind how do you bring clarity into your day-to-day -day, into your mind in, with your day-to-day -day activities how do you embrace that clarity in your mind that saucha in your mind for me one of the ways to do that is to stay connected to my practice and this might be very helpful for you as well and of course practice it's very different from one person to the other person even yoga teachers depending on the <laughs> on the lineage that you might be coming from on the school that you might be coming from the yoga practice might be completely different for some of you yoga is about the devo devotion for some of you yoga might be about asana about meditation pranayama so different ways but there is a practice that you can take and integrate into your day-to-day -day life. And that practice, it's going to help you cultivate in that sense of saucha or clarity in your mind. Let me know if that makes sense. I'll be happy to hear from you in the comments if you agree. If you disagree as well, I'm happy to, to, to hear your thoughts. And then finally, the other, the other way that I can see saucha as another, as another opportunity to integrate that um, clarity uh, and that actually this this part is more about with the has to do more with the uh, more with the cleanliness <clears throat> and this is about of course keeping yourself tidy and clean and cultivating personal hygiene and grooming and you might be like but manu how can you tell me that of course i'm clean i take my shower every day and so on Yes, of course, that's, that's what you should do as the professional that you already are. But trust me when I say that sometimes, you know, we tend to forget about that. Sometimes we get to run from one class to the next class. I'm telling you because I've been living in a tropical country where you are sweating every time you take a shower. And so it's not always easy to keep that hygiene. But this is something that, as professionals, it's going to help us cultivate in that saucha, that cleanliness. So something to keep in mind as well. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you agree with that or disagree. Happy to hear from you. Let's go move on to the next one. And the next one, it's our second niyama, which is santosha which this is one of my favorites and this is a niyama that i feel very connected to because i have experienced myself and i even like see this day after day how how when we get to complain about things and how when we get to speak about how terrible and how bad our life is it seems that we it's even more difficult to move forward it's even more difficult to to find the solution to our problems okay so saucha to me it's very connected with the practice of gratitude and 
sometimes we get to think about gratitude and and being grateful only when we may think sometimes oh my gosh only when i reach that when i have a i don't know when i have like a six figure business i'm going to feel grateful every day or when i get to live the life that i want and i'm going to be traveling and living in bali i'm going to feel grateful every day but right now i'm not there yet i cannot feel grateful okay mistake <laughs> for me actually gratitude should be integrated for no matter where you are at <laughs> in your journey so if you are even at the at the beginning of starting your business and you you know are at the moment like kind of zero it's still it's a good day to practice santosha to integrate santosha into your daily life and to practice that gratitude take your time to also celebrate any goals for you know as little as they are uh, they can be little goals or big uh, success or small success take the time to celebrate in them to feel grateful and to feel the contentment which is basically the meaning of this beautiful word that is santosha again let me know your thoughts let me know what you think about this i i really love santosha and we're going to move now to tapas which is another one of my favorites and uh, tapas in spain if you've been in spain i'm sure you know what tapas in spanish means i come from the south of spain andalusia and tapas is basically <laughs> a really nice snack that you would have uh, as you drink your 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 drink you know your beer or your coca cola or whatever you drink <laughs> you will have this little piece of food called tapas but within the context of today's life of course we are talking about tapas from the niyamas which is about discipline Sometimes tapas is translated as austerity, but to be honest, austerity is not a word I resonate with, and uh, I don't think austerity is something that um, can bring a lot of benefits into your day-to-day -day practice. But discipline, I think it's a very good word. And what I like to think about when I think about how to integrate tapas into your day-to-day -day as a as an independent a uh, yoga teacher as an independent wellness planner the first word that comes to my mind it's boundaries you really need to be clear on your boundaries and when i talk about boundaries i'm talking about planning your day planning your week having a setup schedule including what are your top priorities including what are the times of the week in which you're going to be also cultivating um uh, saucha in which you're going to go and do your workout and you're going to go and do your practice these are also non-negotiable and important parts of the business and tapas is about creating that structure creating that 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 um list of tasks that we must do if we want to move forward in our business and to stick to them super important okay tapas remember once the weekend is here yes you can go out and have some tapas like the, the spanish tapas that's fine but during the working days whatever those days are for you please 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 find that clarity find that um structure and stick to that because only tapas only that fire sometimes tapas is also um translated as fire only that fire is going to allow you to build that dream business okay good let's go to the next one svadhyaya self-study self-study and self-study it's about uh, sometimes also translated as study of the self and in this case very often the self is with capital s self-study for me it's about introspection 
it's about listening to yourself it's about embracing all of the emotions you get to you get to live throughout your day it's about acknowledging those under under hidden emotions that we have sometimes that it might be um, hard for us to manifest or it might be it might be hard for us to accept that we have those emotions that is what is vadaya is 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 vadiaya is about for me it's about connecting with that um inner dialogue that we have and embracing anything that comes up from a business perspective i like to study how my business is going how is it doing and especially how am i doing and how am i feeling one of the practice i like to do is to record at the end, by the end of the week to do a little recording uh, sometimes you can also you could work with a little diary and to write something or to record something about how did the week go and especially how did you feel throughout the week this is the way this is one of the ways i feel you can integrate svadhyaya into your day to day as a yoga or wellness printer if you have other other ideas i'll be super happy for, to hear from you let me know in the comments as i said this is a very practical way that i that i that i like to use and i i find it very very helpful and finally let's go to the last of the niyamas which is ishvara pranidhana which sometimes is translated as surrender to god although i know god is a very loaded term and so i like to use surrender to a higher power and of course when we talk about a higher power it depends on each and every one of us um some that some of you might believe in god some of you might not believe in god some of you might believe in the universe in nature whatever that is even sometimes i like to to think in the in the future version of myself or the highest version of myself okay whatever that higher power is for you isvara pranidhana it's suggesting to cultivate not only cultivate a relationship with the, with that higher power but also to trust to trust the process we might get stuck with things like um you know so that we might get stuck with things like we might feel lost along the way uh, we have been told to do something in a specific way with our business perhaps you've been told to you know to send an email every week to your list and share something helpful with them share some kind of content that is going to help uh, that is going to help you nurture them and for instance this nurture process of you know sharing something with your people and and connecting with them it's a process that is completely necessary especially if you are cultivating the online part of your business but sometimes it takes time and it's very easy sometimes to get to think like oh my gosh you know i don't have the trust that this is going to happen um i don't feel that i have the trust that one day i'm going to be traveling to australia and running my retreat there okay i just bring in ideas but if you have the goal in mind the only two things that you can do one of them of course is to put the work in the right direction once you put your goal in the right direction the other only thing you can do is to trust and surrender there are so many aspects that we cannot control and it would be a waste of time to try to control everything so my friend what i believe ishvara pranidhana can be helpful here it's it's the, you know it's to embrace this concept of doing what you know <clears throat> it's the work do it in the right direction but also let go and trust trust and surrender that your work it's going to reach to the yield fruit one day 
All right, my friend, this is all that I wanted to share with you today. Of course, if you want to dive deeper into that, remember uh, you can visit my website, yogabizmentor.com, and on the top that says blog, you can find this blog for this week, which uh, it's called um, Off the Mat Practice for Yogapreneurs, Embrace Niyamas in Your Business. If you have watched this video, I will be super grateful if you can let me know in the comments what you think, if you can let me know if there is something that you agree or something that you disagree, or if there is something that you learned today. I'm always super happy to hear from you. And finally, I would be super, super, super grateful if you could share this video with someone that you think might find it helpful as well. Having said that, this is my time to say goodbye, my friend, and I'll be talking to you very soon. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this talk today.